Ladies and gentlemen, this is Adam Kokush here at the Libertarian Party National Convention 2018 in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I am at the after party with none other than Ernie Hancock of Freedoms Phoenix. That's Freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. As I'm not even doing him justice, but uh, Ernie Hancock is someone who I've long considered uh, the, the godfather of my activism, both in and out of media and in and out of politics. Uh, from Phoenix, of course, and now I, I mean, I moved to Arizona to be closer to him. I didn't want to be too close. I'm a little, I'm, I'm, I'm up in the mountains. He's in Phoenix, you know, whatever. But, uh, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't make it easy for him to get to me. That's, that's a bad idea. But no, I, I'd make it easy for me to get to him downhill going into the valley. Uh, Ernie's had a very interesting role within the Libertarian Party as well over, uh, I don't know how many decades. So, Ernie, I don't know if you want to start with what, what sort of your, your LP credentials? Um, in the late 80s, I became awakened by reading the Omnibus Trade Competitiveness Act of 88 and can see fascism was coming. It's a long story, but it was economics. And I had no training. I hadn't read all the books, Atlas Shrugged, Who's That? I mean, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, it was in the early 90s that uh, I had already filed a lawsuit against election, 44 election laws in Arizona that went all the way to the Ninth Circuit. And I did oral argument before the Ninth Circuit as a pro se litigant. But the only people that understood what was really going on, the principles of what I was trying to accomplish and bring awareness to, were libertarians. Fortunately, I hooked up with hardcore, no compromise libertarians and, well, let me explain it to you. <laughs> and, uh, but then I realized it was the early in the 90s, I spoke at, um, the, in 91, I think it was, the December convention in Arizona. Uh, I was a keynote speaker at the lunch. And I could see that there was a division. There were those that wanted to use the party to get a big shiny badge and they're in charge of something, which is easy in the Libertarian Party. You show up it's and- It's hard you, to avoid. Yeah, you get elected, you know? And, um, uh, but they wanted to emphasize their position or they wanted to get more votes, but they weren't so much about advocating the principles or educating the public. Fortunately, the people that I kind of hooked up with in Phoenix were those. So it was easy for me to transition in, as a libertarian activist. And in um, the end of 93, I became the Maricopa County chairman under the condition that we go hardcore and let's do some edumacating. So we did, and we were very effective. And then at a national level, there was an attack on Arizona because we wouldn't join their unified membership program, which was kind of this, you joined you mean you, you, for being too libertarian for the Libertarian Party? That's Ernie. I can go on and on and on. But, but what happened was during that transition, I was a lot of the young activists here now that were you know, challenging the status quo thing. They weren't really living up to their principles and so on. And, uh, but by the time we got to Orlando, I could see that the voluntarist anarchist wing, you know, from the Revolution that I was involved in, you know, from the Revolution, those people in the youth started, you know, invading the thought process and the activism on a local level, and it overwhelmed national. So by the time you got Daryl Perry running as an, you know, anarchist, you know, and, and you doing 2020 to dissolve. I'm, I'm just a localist. It's you know, a very, 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 well, see, you, know, you know, unifying, easy to, to get a lot of people on board on kind of idea. Well, it comes from um, the left and the right, and I could see that all of the young people, we were just looking for the truth. That's why Freedom's Phoenix is uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies, you know. And uh, so as a young activist, I was about your age. I started at 28 and, you know, did all my bones, you know, in my 30s and so on. But the thing that I, I, I got tired of fighting the Libertarian Party, you know, and, and the Ron Paul revolution really woke a lot of people up, not just to the philosophy, but who really represented it. When you think libertarian, you don't necessarily think the Libertarian Party. You think the local libertarian or the philosophy that you learned a little bit about or Ron Paul or something like that. Now, here at the convention on Saturday, they had a Mises Institute um, or Mises Caucus, you know, that you know, close by that a lot of people, hundreds of people went. Take human action. You know, and big, it, big credit to Mike Heiss for bringing a lot of people into the party that way. It was, I, I got there late, but you, know, you had a, a, a taped presentation by Ron Paul. Tom Woods was there, Bob Murphy, Scott Horton, Jeff Dice. I mean, a lot of the guys got to go say, yo, what's up? Go have dinner. You know, it was just amazing the influence that they've had on the, and that is the fire under the butt of the Libertarian National that's keeping them honest. 
Now, the thing is, is that in Orlando, I saw it, it was a good solid third. You know, the people that were, oh, man, this is not, you know, no, and I could see it coming. So I was really excited about New Orleans. I go, yep, here, you, here we go. It's going to be probably a majority. I think it is. I think they're starting to see that principle is what's going to get them elected. They were trying to hide from it. You know, in the 90s, Nash. Well, I, I describe it as like hiding behind the skirts of a quasi libertarian like I don't Gary know what Johnson. From. It's, it's just a stinking thinking. They um, think that, you know, you're scaring the horses or something, you know, you're, if you're advocating for a hardcore principle, which is the platform, which is why in 2006 they stripped the entire platform so they get a congressman bar to run or something. I'm like, oh, you guys are killing me. You know, then after that, it was, you know, Wayne Allen Root running, and then you had, uh, you know, Gary Johnson gets it and it, uh, races for national chair and all. It was just, so I kind of stepped back and doing liberty, libertarian activism outside the party. Now, they're all friends of mine, and I still help and work, but it's kind of just now starting to rise back up from the bottom, and National is reflecting that. The LNC in Orlando two years ago had a lot of people that came in that were pressing for this kind of activism, and even more now, and a lot of stuff that you've been doing, and the different coalitions that are coming in. When you have libertarian socialists, you know, and and uh, you know, and people from the right and so on are coming in under. Yeah, okay, but we agree to that. You know, non-initiation of force thing. Once you get that, the culture shift that they're looking for doesn't matter. You can be socialist all you want as long as you're not making me. You can fund it yourself. I don't care. You know, and that's one thing that kind of surprises people. So there's a lot more overlap. And there was a at the end of the convention. I'm sure you had you had something to do with the uh, resolution that you wanted to have. Look, as long as you're you know, accept the non-aggression principle. I mean, think whatever you want. I don't care. And uh, and I think the reason it failed, it had support, but the reason it failed, because one, it was it was um, it was, uh, if I remember the exact things. language, it was uh, uh, whereas those of us who are motivated, all of us who are motivated by uh, 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 passionately motivated to uh, to fight against injustice, uh, that we need to hang together. Uh, we, the members of the Libertarian, assert that. All who embrace the non-aggression principle are welcome, regardless of what their preferences might be or would be for preferences are for what a voluntary society might look like. And that's 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 yeah. See, this is the point: as you can advocate for anything you want. Socialism is called families. I mean, you can do whatever you want. Every family. Well, I would just, one more thing about the technical part of this. We had uh, this required two thirds support to pass as a resolution. Right. We had well over fifty percent and just under two thirds. Yeah, but I, I think it paved the way for the future for this opening up this discussion because I'm a purist. I'm like, man, oh heck no! But if you're a purist on what, what you want everybody to think? No, and I want to have where uh, coercion is not an option. They're not doing a monopoly of force. To, you know, to impose on you whatever it is that they want. So I don't care what they want. You can associate anyway and go be hippie on your, uh, I don't care, you know. The thing is, is that that message is starting to permeate throughout the left and the right because they're seeing that they're just being manipulated and controlled and, and propagandized and so on. The Libertarian Party is a threat to the status quo. And I don't mean this, you know, status quo of, you know, Hillary Foundation or the left or the deep state or Trump or any of that. I mean the status quo that there even should be a government. You know, this concept, they, they got you thinking inside this box, you know, and, and we need to start thinking way outside the box because that's what pirates above the box yeah. like above the grid that's right that's what pirates without borders.com is all about technology will allow us to decentralize everything what happens when government is obsolete they're they're crabs in the bucket gonna be trying to pull you back in and what happens when you're above the grid we're going to space and government's not invited I mean you know they go oh yes we are I mean here comes Trump with the you know space cadets or whatever it is so I'm going that's good I didn't think of that Join the space cadets, you know. Anyway, so um, it's like you're going to go have the, the alliance is going to protect your asteroid property rights or something, you know. I'm just going, oh, man, you guys are killing me. So this is uh, the discussion that we need to start having, and I think it's happening. So I, you know, Nick Sarwark, I've been critical of, you know, him kind of being welcoming to the, you know, the, the, the left and their coercion on their way to kind of sort of in Bill Weld. But I've come to be, you know, um, Nick Sarwark supporter, really. I, I think 
one, he runs a great convention, but a lot of smart people have screwed us. I mean, you know, just because they're smart and they're capable, but I think he's got the message and he understands the power of the, this no compromise and that there's a, in his big tent, there's enough room for libertarians, you know. As long as the, you got big tail as big as you want, as long as there's some libertarians and purists can be in there. And that's the message. So now I'm feeling a lot more comfortable about instead of focusing on the message and the branding and the libertarian being a, even associated with the Libertarian Party, that we can take it local now, that we can start focusing back and not feel like you're going to get undercut by a national message, that that national message is now becoming more and more inclusive on the non-aggression principle, that we're not worried about pandering to boats, you know, we're not worried about, we're representing and showing confidence. When you do that, then I don't have to worry about them undercutting everything I do all the time. So now I can go back and focus locally. Mm. That is very powerful to me because it frees up a bunch of my mind space and time. And, and I don't have to make up for some stupid thing that National said. So, so you're, you're excited to see that the Libertarian Party can be a bit more of an umbrella for activism around libertarians and for the movement as a whole. I don't want to have to explain every time they say something stupid. Or they put up a, you know. Well, by by they, you mean Gary Johnson, Bob Barr, Bill Weld. Now I mean a Libertarian National Unified Voice of this is what kind of how the, I don't care, you know. It's just uh, I don't want to have to explain to Liberty because I've been doing this for thirty years, and the biggest thing was not me having to explain the platform or what Libertarian principles is. It's me explaining them not agreeing with it or trying to you know soften it or change it or we didn't really mean it like that or so I'm going. Oh yes, we did. It was in convention. We voted on this stuff all, all the overwhelmingly con for decades, and you keep trying to you know. So now I don't have that fear anymore and the reason is because of the internet because people you, they say something man the horde just oh hell no but I'm not a fan of the social media Facebook get off it man you're just in the surveillance state of whatever but they're hashtag uh, leave loudly yeah, 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 yeah you know dude there's many others and we there's a presentation don't, don't just leave and disappear let people know I have I have an auto post that goes up every 24 hours with hashtag leave loudly there so if anybody so they know hey come find me on steam and come find me on other platforms a, you know we just started doing DTube I went to a steam it presentation Agord uh, I think is his name yep. he's gonna help us with you know a lot of stuff with our activism Freedom's Phoenix and Pirates Without Borders in the radio show were already on, already on DTube and how to, you know, finance it and monetize it and get out of the, you know, and I, I, we want to be an example for this is what I've been screaming about is decentralization of communication information. We have a new chat coming. It's, going to, it's called Ahoy Chat, and it's hailing frequencies invisible to the crown. They don't even know you sent it. None of the signal, they map out your whole network, and everybody's complaining about metadata, and they go, ooh, a week later there, I got signal. I'm going, are you kidding me? You just mapped every time somebody joins it. I say, I go, I see you. You know, it's just, ah. Oh. So this, not- PiratesWithoutBorders.com. Yeah, 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 yeah. And watch the video, man, you'll dig it. And you go to all the categories, anyway. So the thing is, is that, and. Freedomsphoenix.com. Freedoms and the S Phoenix. That's what he's trying to do. All right. So we do it on the show all the time. But the point is, is that I am much more encouraged about the change in not just the nation and the awareness, but that the foundation has been put on the LNC and the opinion that you could see in the largest off-presidential election year Libertarian Party convention that there ever was. And I'll tell you why. It was Bill freaking Weld. you got to give him a big sloppy wet one and say, thank you, Bill, because people could see what was happening. And they go, no, 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 no. So all the activists... A lot of people, just to be clear, a lot of people are getting involved in the Libertarian Party right now, not just to support my campaign, because I do represent that principled, consistent message, because they really want to make sure that whoever the nominee is in 2020, that it's not some Someone who is so far from our principles. I mean, it's really, it's really, it's kind of binary. Either you get it or you don't. What, what your effort is doing, they're seeing that there is no. What are they going to have? You know, Adam versus the status quo, the supporters of the tyranny of whatever. No, they're, they're, they're. It's not going to work. They're going to have to embrace the hardcore libertarian activist. I am too a real libertarian. I mean, you know, that, that's what's going to happen. So I see 2020 as a threat to the establishment, not just because. Libertarians are going to represent the platform, you know, that's been resurrected and crafted and coming back, and it's being hardcore. 
What they're going to be afraid of is the very idea that we would even challenge their existence. You know, we have, I, we, I just came down to give a bunch of shirts away, belay the state, you know, not off grid. We're above the grid, man. We're in space. We're got, you know, what are you going to do now when you can't come find us? We're going to space and government is definitely not invited. Then I mean, they're not going to try and invite themselves. Space is really big. You know, the ocean is really big. Hell, the land here is really big. So this, this thing is going to take off. I've been doing this a long time and I can see the trending and it's an exponential thing. So when you get the decentralized internet, and we start embracing that and get off this government controlled echo chamber crap. You know, which you could see since 09, I've been screaming, they're not your friends, they're Zuckerberg's friends and his friends, which is CIA. But anyway, so the, <laughs> and they, them, those, the ones that won't leave us alone. But the, um, I'm pretty excited and I see what's coming. I'm kind of an older guy, I'm patient, I've been doing this a long time, and I'm, you know, was looking forward to breeding them out. And I have four kids and 11 grandkids. I'm, I, I tell my kids and my grandkids, I tell them my grandkids, I'm going, look, what grandpa's doing is for you to ride on the upswing when the Freedom's Phoenix is reborn out of the ashes of Lady Liberty's torch. That's what the logo means. I go, it's going to crash. And when it does, they're going to rise up with it. They're going to be able to benefit from all this groundwork that we've all been doing. I'm thinking, a lot of people think 2020. You know, 20 minutes in the future and 20 miles away. Mm -hmm. I'm like 20, you know, 2,000 years. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm thinking long term. Now, liberty in my lifetime is only going to happen with the party of principle. And they got to be principled. I think we're on that trajectory. And as I look at the uh, convention, it has, in the 90s, it was, it was getting pretty long in the tooth. There, were old, there was lots of gray, okay? And I was the young guy. I'm in my late 20s, early 30s, you know, building up. And I'm like, man, these guys, they're just, and I go, I don't have to, you know, do anything. I just have to wait for you guys to, like, die off or something, you know? Well, that's what's happening. The youth are coming in. The average age has probably dropped over 20 years, and they can see it. And they are either going to embrace it or they're going to get steamrolled over by it or a competing party or made irrelevant. And they felt, I think the Libertarian Party has been, has felt irre, uh, irrelevant, you know, for probably the last decade. But it's starting to get, they, they, they have this hole in their chest they got to fill with somebody that used to be governor or used to be a congressman or some of this. I'm like, wow, man, you don't see what's coming. They didn't see the Trump thing coming. They don't understand what that was about. You know, that was about a defiance of the status quo. And if they had been in that position, if they had been taking that position, if they'd been hardcore, if they'd been supporting a different way and not try to pander to the left and the right and represent something new, they could have benefited from this. And if they take that position now, you know, they'll benefit in two years. So I'm like, you know, I see it's bright, but I got now that I think Nashville is taking it, they're not going to undercut everything that we do. I can go back local and have some fun because here we go. Freedomsphoenix.com. Well, I, should I stop? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Ernie Hancock, check him out. Get behind his work, piratewithoutborders.com. Thank you so much, Thanks. Godfather. Thanks.